how you form love, or you consider love. Does your boyfriend make you anxious? No. Okay. Do we see why perhaps she's attracted to this guy? Does your mother make you anxious? No. Does your dad make you anxious? Did you see how I got there? Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> if you don't, don't say yes or don't stay quiet, because then I can't teach you, and then you're not helping me be mean, and you're not helping yourself. That's why she links more towards her dad, and then links also to her boyfriend because of that anxiety. Like that. Well, she's liking this other guy. Why won't the other guy oh, I it was tell me? No, no, no. The no. Other one. The other guy, the triangulation here with dad is the other guy. So there has to be something in the origin story where dad interfered. There has to be some interference. There has to be. Or have you been waiting for your dad to tell you something? No. My dad wasn't there when I was little. Zero to seven. So that's kind of why I think there's a relation because when someone's there for me all the time, I get used to it. But then somebody else comes along and I'm like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, especially with this case that he makes me just like, I just don't want to be near him, but like I do at the same time. And I don't know why. Because <laughs> he's your dad. Yeah. yeah. And you're trying to fulfill your unmet need. Every single person, place, thing, or situation is your parents and your unmet need. And he wasn't there. So what chaos are you creating? The confusion. Okay. It's, I don't think it's confusion, because I know that I don't want to be with him, right? The chaos is confronting him and hurting his feelings. Okay, what's your dad up to now? You know him? Yeah. What age are you meet him? Uh, well, he was there my whole life, but he's a truck driver. And he was like a, kind of like a, all over the United States. So he was here for like one day out of the week and then he was gone. Oh my God. <laughs> so I your dad too? My, oh. My stepdad was like it's, this. Over the world. Like, <laughs> over the world like driving. This is like mother and father. Truck driving. We had a truck in the business and that's what Yeah, my dad too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So then at what age did you actually develop a relationship with him? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Take um, a guess. Were you in high school, middle school? I was starting middle school, so like nine ish, maybe. Is that middle no, school? No, no, no. Already? Like 12. That's no, like yeah, no, I don't know. Like I don't 11, know. 12. Well, nine is like fourth grade. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 11, 12, like right there. And how did the relationship change? He sold his business, or? No, he still does it, but he does it more locally now than he did home in the day. So the one day a week that he was out traveling, he would stay at home with your mom and you? Yes. You guys were a family? Yeah. Okay. And when he sold, when he became more local, he lived with you guys. Yeah. So you saw him more frequently? Yeah. Okay. How was your relationship? To this day, our relationship isn't the best. It's fine when we're talking to each other, but we don't talk a lot. Even though he's in the house, he comes home very late, but it's, there's not a lot of communication. So when I do have to talk to him, I get anxious because I'm not used to talking to him. So we can see the thread with the new guy. So why do we create? Why did you create this situation? What need does it fulfill? What's this new guy's name? Well, let's just call him John. We won't. <laughs> okay, so John is the new guy, and Jose is the, the boyfriend. Okay, is that his real name? Okay. <laughs> so John is your dad. So what need did you have to create this? The attention. You keep saying attention, and I think that's a fabricated response. I think you think that's what the answer is, because you yourself said mm -hmm. that your boyfriend gives you attention. Mm -hmm. So now I'm not saying it's not, yeah. but let's look deeper. Let's probe a little deeper. What unmet need do you have with your dad that you would create this guy you're happy going along, Little Red Riding Hood, but all of a sudden a wolf shows up. What need do you have to create that? And you talked about at least one thing a moment ago with your dad. You said you don't talk a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And that when you do communicate, he makes you anxious. It's a parallel to this guy. Yeah. Okay. So what is it that you really need? What's the need? You don't need the attention because you have the attention. What do you need that he didn't give you? I think it's not being there all the time. Okay. Something so you could put temporary. Uh, temporary. Okay, that's a good word. Good word. You're going to find temporary in the buckets. Of course, we see that with the dad. Would you call that a bad bucket item, the fact that he wasn't around all the time? What would make it a good bucket? Um, so, oh, you were you here when we covered the buckets? Yeah. When you ask the client the good and the bad of their parents, would you call that that that's a bad thing about your father? The fact that he was never around, or yeah. would it be okay? So it's in the buckets, and we bypass that part of the buckets, but we buy, but it's in there. What? So what's <laughs> trying to hold it? Okay, well, what's I would I would stop and ask her what's triggering that. What? Okay. What do you? What's the triggering? What's, the, what's triggering the emotion <laughs> styles? Which emotion? You're crying. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. The realization. Okay. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You connect. Close your eyes. Don't look at me. Just close your eyes. You're alone in the room. I want you to connect to the part of your body where you're feeling this emotion right now. Where do you feel it? My heart. Okay. Which chakra? Fourth chakra. It's okay. Let it out. It's good. Anyone have tissue? I'm cracking. It's okay. That's what we do. You always cry. We cry. There's a tissue box? Oh, great. This is the perfect classroom that there should be a tissue box. Okay, so it could be the realization. Okay, but you as a therapist, and you've said this before, oh my God, I'm going to be crying with my client. And I said, okay, that's okay to a certain degree. She's sobbing on the floor. You know, you have to take a look at this after your session and see what triggered in you. Okay, so do you guys remember that in step three, I asked, I said you can ask about where you feel the emotion? So thank you, Ms. Rapaji, your eyes are bloodshot. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so she feels it in her heart, in her fourth chakra. Does anyone remember what the fourth chakra is about? Speak <laughs> Are you afraid of me? <laughs> Was it right? Okay, the agape love. Yes, perfect. I was not expecting that answer, but absolutely. It's the unconditional love. She is in need of unconditional love. And what happened? Did any of us get unconditional love? No. Nobody. How are you going to get unconditional love? From yourself. So this is the heart center. So, just to piggyback on Jennifer's commentary, if you're looking for Ford Chakra love, where do you have to go to get that? The third. Okay. The power center of self love. This is the inner circle. Okay? So, you want this need of unconditional. What is. If she, if the need is unconditional love, which would be a hundred, what would be the opposite? What would, what would it be? What word? Condition. And your father loved you on the condition of what? Okay. Why did he work? To provide for us. Okay. That's why she had such an issue with the roles. Did your mom work? Yeah. Okay. But he was the main provider. Yeah. Okay. And he was not around that much, right? Yeah. So the main provider, the masculine role, can't be around. John isn't around because he's not the main guy. John, Jose is mom. John is dad. 
and there's a role issue there. And I don't know, you might have heard as a little girl, your mom, I do violin, you speak Spanish? I do papa, whatever, oh, I proveedor, and all that. The provider, and you know. So if you hear that, and it would be interesting to see where your Saturn is, make a note of this, because I forget everything, so when we do the chart, we can see where your Saturn is. There has to be something there. So that's a very Virgonian thing. The work, the work, the work, the work ethic, the work, the man's the provider. So there's a roles issue. And so now her father decided to give up trucking internationally and decided to come home. Now John needs to decide to go truck internationally to other girls and leave her home alone because it's stable. But she needs to create some shock, something to test the system so that she can create some change. Do you know if there was any infidelity with your parents? <laughs> yeah, I figured you didn't since your mom never even told you about the miscarriage yeah. or your pregnancy or anything. I, I figured secrecy was a big theme in your family, <laughs> just a hunch. I don't know. So you start seeing how we start dismantling the person's story, and now you have roles, you have temporary or conditional love, you have issues of secrecy. You've got material for a whole year and a half here. This client's never going to leave. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just sitting here looking and like listening to this, and I see like so many links between all of us. Of right course, because we're all a mirror. Yeah, because we have like so many similar. I mean, I've shared here. my roles right issue. now, even with this trucking thing. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so what was her need? What did she say? Remember, it's the client's need. Not being temporary? Temporary, right? Is that what you said? Okay. So now ask her to define. What was it exactly that you said? I would normally write everything down. So obviously I'm in a different sense. It was not temporary? Yeah. No, she said temporary. That is temporary. That right. it is temporary. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so the need is that you get temporary love. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So now we want her to define temporary. <laughs> and it must be what? Pella? Zero. Measurable. So you have to tell the client. Because if not, they're going to be like, oh, I want love, and they're there, you know, it has to be measurable. So let's define temporary in measurable terms. Once you have measurable, you kind of get all of the smarts. That's sort of like the anchor. And if not, you can say, okay, by what time or whatever, which you'll duplicate in your rule book. So you have some flexibility there, but the measurable is the main one. Okay, so define that. I don't know how to define it in measurable terms. Temporary is just, you know, you're there for, let's say, like, a, I don't know, a few hours and then you're gone. Right then. Okay. Is that measurable? Yes. That's yeah. measurable. <laughs> That's time. Okay. But no, don't write time. Write her exact words. A few hours. Uh, like, you're there for a few hours and then you're just not. So like that's her definition. And if it meets the criteria of measurable, which it does, because it has time component, you're good. She could have said days, she could have said months, she could have yeah. said years. Yeah. So we know that he would come for right just a few out. hours because he works till really late. Even now that he lives at home, right? You still only see him a few hours. So we start piecing together the puzzle. Okay, what's the next step? What's step five? Oh, step five. Um, how can you fill the need of Well, you can use you can use a conditional, you can use a uh, oh. giving yourself a few hours, maybe that's what yeah. your inner child is asking for. Yes. So how can you fill fulfill this need, the need to give yourself time maybe or that conditional love? I mean I guess learning to accept myself for who 
with a few albums. What memory is coming up? When is it that you don't accept yourself? Or what is it that you do accept about yourself? I accept myself, but sometimes there's moments when you don't. What moments? Can you give me an example? Thoughts that you're having about yourself or an action that you do to yourself? Thoughts. Sometimes um, I have doubts of relationship and other people, not with myself. And this is very much a mirror to me. Because it's showing me that what I'm scared of is what I'm doing. strong shadow man. And there's a lot of judgment and self-criticism. That's the anxiety. Who remembers Mercury and the anxiety which need it meets? There's only four needs. Validation. Validation. Why? Why validation? What's Mercury? Mercury is constantly moving. She has anxiety. Her definition of love is anxiety. It's movement. So, as long as she's in a constant moving state, she's worth something. At the root, 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 this is a thread of worthlessness. There's a big worthlessness thread here. So we have roles, we have worthlessness, we have you know conditional love. So she's the one who's not even giving herself those hours in the day, which you said beautifully. That was beautiful. Okay. And I asked about behavior versus thought. Because a lot of times, and this is where the chart is really helpful. I'm interested to see. Make these notes. What's in your sixth house? Because sixth house is health. And sixth house or Virgo has a lot to do with self-defeating thoughts and a lot of like obsessive compulsive thoughts and uh, autoimmune disorder. So, <laughs> or GI stuff. So autoimmune disorders are very common when people are constantly thinking. Do you have any autoimmune disorders? Okay, do you have any illness whatsoever? What's the physical thing that you get when you're sick or you most, uh, how do you say by they say that you most uh, get? Really bad. Okay. And notice, where did she touch? No, no. She didn't touch her throat. She touched her fourth chakra. Oh, I And the lungs are breath. The lungs are mercury. We did a whole activity on the lungs. So her lungs, this is her breath. This is her life. Maybe there's a lack of value of her own life. And that's where the origin story would really help. That's where knowing the story of mom and that, and that miscarriage would really help. Because if your mom is anxious the whole entire pregnancy that you're not gonna live, oh my God, zero to 100. I have to live or I don't deserve to live. Do you see how I'm getting threads? I don't have any questions fabricated. I'm just listening and asking what naturally comes. That's it, it's just a conversation with another person that's in pain. That probably has the same things that you have. You probably don't spend any time on yourself. Maybe your hospital visits are the only time that you get for yourself. And maybe that's where she creates them. In the language of the model, not that she's at fault for anything or that you're at fault. But that's why it's important to not only pay attention to the words they say, but pay attention to the emotion. Pay attention to facial expressions. Grab on to those threads and then let them talk. I like thin crust. Yeah, I 
see people do that all the time. I'm like, what? Incongruency. We talked about And this. they don't realize you're doing it. She went right to her fourth chakra. <laughs> you guys thought lungs and throat because you oh, thought no, of I breath. Right, you couldn't see. But she went right here. The word hadn't even come out of her mouth yet, and she was already going straight to her heart. And so when, that's a need for And when love. you see the tears, there's a reason for that. Oh, right. right. So you can't just say, okay, well, let me ask you the next question. <laughs> <laughs> You're not helping. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, I got five more <laughs> questions. <laughs> and that's why there's no okay, stay on you know, the mirror in the shadow for three sessions. Time is it? It is 11.48. Oh, good. Okay, perfect. So she can spend some hours with herself. Okay, so now what rule can you put in your rule book that you're going to dedicate some hours to yourself? Um, I don't know. Okay. Is there something you like to do in particular? Do you have a hobby? Find the video games. Okay, but does do you find yourself beating yourself up after you do the video games? You, it's fine time. How many hours do you dedicate to video games a day or a week? Okay. Oh, okay. Do you want to do more, or do you want to find a different? Different. Okay. So when we write a rule, what we're trying to do is give ourselves the need. This is how you're going to meet the need. So you stated that temporary love was like these few hours. I need you to remember zero to 100. Very, very important, the zero to the 100. So temporary or conditional, unconditional. So what she's saying is I need a few hours or she needs to dedicate her whole life to herself. We just use the client's words. It doesn't matter. The point is that she makes time for herself. Okay, that you're the priority. So what is it that you've been really longing to do for yourself that you don't either give yourself permission or don't find time? And it would be something fun or a nice experience. Or um, for some reason I always wanted a piano. I have a piano, but I don't dedicate time to it. Okay. It, it lasts another week. Okay. <laughs> How did that week look? Did you practice every day? Yeah. Yeah. That's why things don't last. They're zero to 100. So how about a few hours a week? Okay. So what rule can you put? How much time do you want to dedicate? This is where you want to click key in on those SMART goals. So this is where they have to be more specific. So how many minutes or how many hours, what days of the week, or it could be general. You don't have to tell me Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But just so that you can hold yourself accountable. I could spend like two hours, maybe every like twice a week. Maybe. Okay, so two hours twice a week practicing piano. She has all the right in the world to get a piano teacher if she wants. That doesn't mean she's not meeting her own need. If she has the money or that's what she wants, great. If not, she can teach YouTube. herself on YouTube. YouTube. Exactly. <laughs> so. If you want to have that discussion to help the client out, to give them information, if you know a great piano teacher, great. That's where you're coming and you're giving resources. And so from the lecture yesterday, I talked about in the health belief model that part of our role is giving information that the client might not know. So if she likes piano, maybe you know of a free piano recital, which I happen to know, that's going to be, I think, this weekend that you can go see. And it opens. The, the horizons for your client. There is an app that you can, well, I don't know if your piano is electronic. Uh, it is. There is an app that you can connect your phone with your, the, the piano, and then you can learn with that app. I have to look it up, I forgot the name of it. Okay, perfect. And now you gave her some homework. And if the client can't think of anything, and sometimes you'll get that, oh, there's nothing. My kids are my world, and you're gonna get that, you know type of thing. Then you can give them one of those homeworks or you can have pages in your in your desk 
of photocopies of you know coloring books, or you can have them do a creative project, whatever you pull it out of your ass, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's simply to bring them to that child center so that they can go up the musical scale and start all over. Think of do re mi, C. Do is C, C for child. Bring them back to that first do and give them something creative because they're gonna birth themselves, their new child from themselves. You're leaving the Costco to pick up the Nordstroms. So now you have an assignment. Does everyone see how the issue has nothing to do with this guy, with John? John is not the issue. John is simply a placeholder for your father, for your childhood, for unmet needs, for things that happened way before you were physical in the body at the moment of conception that you just don't have that access to that information because your mom is secret. And, you know, you may never know. It's fine. We don't, you know, that helps, but it's not anything crucial. You know, we're not dead without it. Um, but that the issue is having something or someone, a situation or a person in your life that is in and out, in and out. And that's what he is. Your constant is Jose, but John is the, the temporary. And so he's simply a placeholder right back at step number one where he's dad. And the need is that the love of dad comes in a very temporary few hours trickled in. So she pushes him away and the other guy comes back, but in just little, little you know, seconds. Does it make sense? Any questions? Okay. Any questions? How does she get rid of John? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you work with the client, but first we're talking about awareness. Well, the thing is that she's supposed to hold herself accountable to make this time about herself. It might not be overnight. We talk about behavior change that may never come. But, you know, I can't sit here and tell her, oh, well, ditch John, it's your dad. You know, that's not my role. <laughs> as a therapist. But when you can bring awareness, then you can help the client integrate. So the Band-Aid, we have integration. And we're not going to jump in to do it differently that fast. That's just not going to be. She might dump him tomorrow, but then the next day she'll have Joaquin. <laughs> or she'll have a situation that's temporary. You know. I, I'm, I just thought of something. But if um, if she has issues with confrontation with him, which obviously is associated with how worthy she feels, because you have to literally stick up for yourself when you confront someone, and that's what she's having problems with. Right. And remember how she talked about the lungs? Who had the deflated balloon in here? <laughs> Aniela, it was you? <laughs> okay, so when we did that lung activity, someone had a deflated balloon. And we practiced who liked breathing large and who practiced, you weren't in that class, and who liked to, to not breathe too much. You're probably, I don't want to breathe too much because I don't deserve to take up any more space than what's my space. Okay? And that's part of... So, why you don't confront. So I don't, deserve I don't deserve to tell anybody how I feel. And so you can swallow those emotions, and that, of course, can call a whole, you know, cause a whole host of, of physical things and emotional things and things like that. But the root here, when we look at the dynamic of the triangulation, is that her alliance with mom was stable and very mosaic-like. And she had to create... She had to create instability in another person, place, thing, or situation. So you might tell this guy, text him with an emoji, gotta go, thumbs down, or fuck you, <laughs> whatever you want, pick an emoji of your liking and tell him to go fuck off. But then, She'll FYI, you'll create, yeah, right, incongruency, yeah. sending uh, sending mixed messages. You'll create perhaps a situation where next week you come in and you're like, oh my God, I can only come to class on Tuesdays because my boss now wants me to work on Thursdays. Another instable 
So we keep creating the same situation over and over, either person, place, thing, or situation, because that needs to be learned. So when there's awareness, that's why I said awareness sometimes is just enough. That might be enough to trigger for her at least, oh, that's what I'm doing. Oh, that's why this is going on. Is all of this a surprise to you? Is this awareness for you? Yeah. Okay. That's why I <laughs> Yeah. And you're very intuitive with yeah. yourself, believe it or not. Oftentimes people that, that don't allow themselves to connect to their body, but you were immediate. I mean, it took me forever. Are you kidding? The first